Well, 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 what do we have here? An outperformance by the couch investing portfolio up 1% compared to the S&P 500, only up 0.32%. Bravo! Well, we don't really care much about that because since the start of this portfolio back in late February, well, the couch investing portfolio is actually down 3.7%, whereas the S&P 500 is up 9.61%. So, although some weeks we might be outperforming, overall, we're still far, far away from beating the market. And so the topic of this video is, of course, what's written in the title and maybe in one of the thumbnails, and that's dead money. Because each and every week I get the comments of saying, who Tesla is dead money, PayPal is dead money, Palantir is dead money, SoFi dead money, Snowflake, D-Local, etc., etc. Everything is dead money, unless, of course, you personally own it, and it's NVIDIA, and it's up 3,000% in the last two and a half hours. Fortunately, not everything is NVIDIA, but I will show you that NVIDIA actually was dead money, not once, not twice, but a couple of times. Of course, not in the last two years. But beforehand, yes, NVIDIA was also considered dead money. What happened next? Well, we all know what happened next, something that I don't think we will see again in our lifetime. So let's start with the what is dead money, the definition. Of course, hit the subscribe button, like, notification bell on, do all of that. Let's dive right in. So the definition, dead money, two things here. One, low or no growth. This is the most common meaning. If an investment isn't increasing in value over time, it's basically just sitting there. This could be a stock whose price isn't going up or an investment that pays little to no interest. Number two, locked up with low yield. This applies to investments where you can't easily get your money out and even if you can, the return you're getting is very low. This might be money tied up in CDs, certificate of deposits, with low interest rate or even cash under your mattress, which earns no interest and loses value to inflation. Dead money can be a drag on your portfolio performance because it's not keeping up with inflation and missing out on potential growth. Investors typically want to identify dead money and put their money to work in investment that have the potential for better returns. Of course, of course, we all want that. But yes, there will be periods where your investment might be considered dead money because it has not moved for a while, yet the market is up yet some other stocks are up as well. And so you might be considered as someone that has dead money. You're holding the bag, your bag holder, your shoulder is hurting, your bag is hurting, your back is hurting, should I say. So let's deal with that. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, by the way, by the way, I know a lot of you are asking about specific videos with regards to valuation, stuff like that, just so you know, because we do usually use Coifin, the website I usually show you, compare EV to sales, price to free cash flow, price to earnings, next 12 months, etc., etc. Then some of you are saying, oh, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, PE, forward PE, extremely expensive, etc., etc. Well, if you only take those valuation metrics and not look at the business, then yes, it might look very expensive. Plus, you have to understand that a PE of 20, 25, 30 today is not as expensive as before. 10, 15, 20 years ago, even more, if you had a stock with a P of 20, of 25, that was already considered extremely, extremely expensive. But right now, I mean, if we look at, this is on average, found a couple of sources, this is on average. The P ratio for the NASDAQ stands at 31.8. The P ratio of the S&P 500, 28.5. Actually, it depends, it's also a bit closer to 30 as well. So you can see that right now we're in an age, let's say, where yes, things are more expensive than before because you can also now do way more. You can earn more cash while well, these businesses can generate more cash, can grow faster with less necessary investments. Of course, now we know with the huge investments in AI infrastructure, yes, this is now a stage where a lot of companies are investing. But overall, thanks to technology, thanks to the internet, cloud, AI, you name it, Big companies, which of course have a significant weight on the index, 
can make more money with less, can generate more free cash flow with less. And of course, when you get a higher premium, valuation-wise, we've talked about that with regards to Coca-Cola. A lot of people are saying, why is Coca-Cola, why does it have such a high PE? It will pop up on the screen because I, I can't remember, but it's higher than a lot of other companies. Why is it so high? It's barely growing. Well, it's because in the future, you know, Coca-Cola is still going to be here, people are still going to drink it, and their free cash flows are basically secured. That's the whole thing. You put a higher premium on a company where you know that 5-10 years from now still generates billions and billions in free cash flow. A company where you're not so sure that 5 years from now it's still going to generate billions of dollars in free cash flow gets a lower premium because of the risk. That's about it. Now let's start comparing dead monies. Dead monies? Dead money. Anyways, let's start here with one of the favorites of the channel is, of course, SoFi. SoFi, yes, has been dead money since April 2022, has basically done nothing. That's, of course, if you bought here in 2022 and have not sold or bought in any other time between then. Then, yes, could be considered dead money or should be considered dead money because the market has gone up, other investments have gone up, and so your money has not moved at all. But of course, maybe in the future, we're going to have to zoom out quite a lot because the company has continued to execute, has become extremely profitable, etc., etc. And suddenly we're at $20, $25. Whenever that will happen, I don't know. And even if that will happen, I don't know either, but I'm betting on it. So $6.32, yes, could be dead money for two years. And then suddenly we pop. If you look at this crypto chart, I mean, this NVIDIA chart, I mean, let's be honest, it truly looks like a crypto chart, right? Flat ish goes up a little bit, goes down and then goes up like a rocket. But again, it's something that we will rarely see in our lifetime, I think, to be honest. But anyways, Nvidia as well, 2021 until 2023, dead money has not done anything, has actually been down quite a lot between that period. Dead money. And since then, well, it's up four times. Then if you zoom out even more and you go even further back in time, fortunately, this is where I have PTSD because this is where I bought my first shares. Let's not talk about why I sold in this area right here. But okay, same thing here. The September 2018 up until May 2020, dead money, you would have been in the red as well. I can zoom out even more. Of course, we can go back to 2011, 2011 up until 2015, 2016, dead money. Four years, four years if you bought here, even if you bought lower, would be a couple of years until you actually see some green. Now, of course, it's very important to add that's only if you do not dollar cost average. And also important to know that not every company deserves your dollars. If the story changes, if the thesis changes, then you should not be dollar cost averaging because then you're basically putting your money in a furnace. Moving on to serious dead money. If you're a long-term PayPal shareholder, you are now back at prices not seen since 2017. Of course, of course, if you bought in 2017, then at one point you would have been up 375%. Now, if you are very, very unfortunate and you bought at 300, well, was it? Yeah, $300. Yeah, you would be down now 80%. Now, here, of course, if you do not buy back, then unfortunately, I do think you're going to have to wait quite a while until you see some green on that position. But if you dollar cost average, of course, right now, since it's 80% cheaper, dollar cost average, your average will come down quite drastically unless you have really put a lot of money back then and you cannot put a lot of money back now. Moving on to my favorite and my number one is, of course, Tesla. Tesla right now is also dead money. It has been dead money for close to three and a half years, right? Back in November 2020, the price was the same price we are at today. Of course, in between, the stock went higher, the stock also went lower. So, yes, could also be considered dead money. But then if we zoom out... Previously, it was dead money for a long, long time. Well, since it went public, it was dead money for three years and then basically exploded 20x or so. Then it was dead money for a long, long time again. But then we know exactly what happened. I really have to zoom in and out to show you what dead money means in the short run. Short run can, of course, last two to three years. 
But then if, if of course, it is a good company, the thesis is still intact, everything else stays the same or improving, then yes, this is what happens. You can have that money for a long, long time and then suddenly be up 2,000% or even 1,600% or even right now still 982%. Not too bad, right? Not too bad for dead money. Then you, of course, have the type of dead money that doesn't really last that long. For example, here, Meta Platform. You had two things or maybe three things happening at the same time. Huge AI spending, metaverse spending. Then advertisers didn't spend as much. Plus, Apple changed their privacy policy, so that hurt a business like Meta, company which was generating billions and billions in free cash flow. Suddenly, not anymore. Stock dropped 76% extremely fast. So yes, maybe for a little while, dead money, bag holders, heavy, whatever. But the rebound has been extremely fast as well. Since that bottom here at $90 or so, stock is up 468%. How can that be? Well, how can that be? Pretty simple. They reduced spending a little bit and the business has just continued to operate the same as before and actually became much, much better making this company now even more powerful, more profitable than ever before. And that's why it's always important to not just look at the stock, not just look at social media chatter or even watch YouTube videos like this one. It's important to actually follow the business and listen to what management are actually saying. Of course, sometimes rotten apples exist, management can lie or cannot tell us the whole truth. And then of course, we are suckers. I've experienced that myself. It's just the way of the game. You basically have to pick out some winners. And then if you have lots of winners and a couple of losers, it doesn't really matter that much. Same with your portfolio. If let's say one or two positions eventually work out perfectly, 10x, 20x, then it doesn't really matter that you have two positions that are down 90% because that will be a drop in the bucket while the other two will make you extremely rich. And so while right now some of these companies are already green, a lot of these companies are red by quite a lot. Snowflake down 24%, SoFi down 16%, DLocal down 26%. Yes, right now I'm feeling the pain with some of these companies, with some others, not so much. But overall, I still have full confidence in these investments working out. Yes, it's true that in the meantime, it could be considered dead money because if I had put this money into something else, into an NVIDIA, into a Microsoft, or into, I don't know, even Duolingo, for example, then yes, I would have been in green and my portfolio, well, this portfolio specifically, would have been up significantly. That is 100% true. Fortunately, I'm a retail investor. I don't have to show my performance to any client other than the viewers that are watching this video, but I'm here for the long run. And in the long run, I expect all of these positions to be in the green. And by the way, some of these positions are purely short-term, one-year, two-year positions because I caught them in a downtrend. But fortunately, I jumped in a bit too soon. For example, with Lululemon, should have waited a little bit more, would have had a better price. Same with Snowflake. You live and you learn. So overall, that's about it. That's basically an explanation here about dead money, some valuations, performances of some of these companies and others as well. Yes, it's true, sometimes you are stuck with dead money in your portfolio, but so what? So what? If in the long run it works out, who cares? Of course, we wish we could all find the bottom. We wish we could only find winners. Unfortunately, I don't think that is possible. And if you know how to do that, if you have some trick, if you have a crystal ball, please I'd like to buy one and I'd like to offer it to all of my subscribers as well. So let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.